Our first reading is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him, to the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel reading. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Lord, as we just sang those words earlier, we pray that you would come to us. Let nothing prevent your word from coming to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our gospel reading this morning, <clears throat> for me, is one of those stories that just never gets old. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary and announced to Mary that she was going to be the mother of Jesus, and he said these words that nothing is impossible with God. Um, I, I want those words to God to make those words real in our own life today. Because sometimes that's more than a nice verse to memorize. Uh, that is something that when we grab a hold of in our heart, it gives us hope and enables us to go forward with hope. Um, nothing is impossible with God. And when a virgin conceives a child and gives birth to uh, a man, a savior, uh, that's nothing is impossible with God. That's the point of all of this. And that's exactly what happened to Mary. Um, this exchange between Gabriel and Mary, like so many things in the Bible, he said, oh, I would have loved to witness that. Uh, here is Mary, who is a very insignificant person, a very nice teenage girl who was living her life, and all of a sudden, Gabriel shows up and tells her, Mary, you are favored by God, and you are going to give birth to the Son of the Most High. You're going to give birth to a, uh, the Savior, the Messiah of the Lord, and... Um, it says that Mary was troubled. 
to say the least. If you were that person and you were getting that news, I mean, Mary's response had, how, how can this happen to me? Um, a couple of things that may have spurred that thinking on was, first of all, who am I that you should come to me? I mean, I'm just Mary. I'm just this teenager who loves you, but there's nothing special about me, but God chose her. And how in the world can I give birth to the Savior of mankind when I've never had sexual relationships with a man? Mary was confused, to say the least. But in her thinking, she was probably going, okay, I don't understand this, but I believe it. So, Lord, let it be to me just as you have said. And because of that miracle, which was such an incredible miracle, we have been given the greatest miracle of all in our own personal lives in Jesus. People use the word miracle a lot at Christmas. <clears throat> and like so many other things, I googled Christmas miracle this week, and uh, there were only 204 million <coughs> results. <laughs> Safe to say that probably most of those 204 million results had nothing to do with God. Uh, because we use that word miracle, especially at Christmas, a lot during this season. But I want to ask you today, do you believe in miracles? If you were to ask most Christians, they would probably go, yeah, yeah I, I believe in them. But I think if I were to zero in a little bit more and says, but do you believe that they could happen in your life? then people would maybe hesitate a little bit or say, well, who am I that those things should happen in my life? If you ask the church today, do you believe in miracles, you're going to get some mixed answers. Uh, on one hand, if you ask somebody, do you believe in miracles, I've heard people say to me, well, those things just don't happen anymore. They, these, those things just happened back in the day. Um, in fact, it's dangerous to believe in things like that because you get your hopes up and then you get crushed. It's, it's not even good doctrine. I had a pastor tell me, it's not good doctrine, Steve, to believe in miracles. And I said, okay, okay. Um, another view on the other side of the coin, you have those whose lives revolve around miracles. They'll do anything to get their miracle. They get, give me that miracle spring water or that anointed prayer cloth so I can put it over my billfold and whatever I speak and whatever I name and whatever I claim, I can really expect that miracle to happen in my life. And if I want that live pink pony under my Christmas tree, you just need to speak it and believe it. Or if you want that million dollars in your checking account before Christmas, you just got to speak those words. And what you speak, you can believe you will have. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Um, both of these extremes are wrong. And let me say this, first of all, but I, I firmly believe in miracles, but God has not caused us or caused us or called us to seek after miracles. Uh, God is not a Burger King, have it your way type of God where you just tell him what you want, he'll give it to you the way you want. Um, miracles do happen, but we are not called to seek the miracles of God. We are called to seek the God of miracles. He helps us put things in perspective. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be given to you as well. 
<clears throat> the Bible is clear that we are to seek Jesus first. And if he has a miracle for you, he is more than able to bring it for you. More than able. Um, if, you want, if he wants you to have a live pink pony under your Christmas tree, he can do it. Don't get your hopes up. But my point is, nothing is impossible with God. And we need to really... I, I lose sight of that at times. Sometimes I think my issues or my problems are so big that, you know, nothing's going to change. But all things are possible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he was able to feed 5,000 people from a few loaves and fishes, he can certainly feed my family when he wants to even when it seems impossible. If he were able to walk on water, he's more than able to walk into my house, not in the flesh, but in his presence to enter in. Miracles still happen when it is in God's plan for it to happen. He's still a miracle worker. Hope, hope believes in miracles. Um, believes in the impossible. And when we seek God first, when we seek Jesus first, he helps us to believe in those things that it just seems impossible that he can come in and help us in our situations. But don't lose sight of the fact God is awesome. We can't take God and put him into a box and say, this is how he works, and he can't do this. God is awesome, and he loves us. And when he has something that he wants to do, even when it's miraculous in our own lives, he wants us to hold on to that. I want to share with you just three phrases that aren't going to bring miracles to pass in your life, but three phrases that will help us just... Embrace this idea that nothing is impossible with God. Um, first thing I want to share with you is to re remember the past miracles in your life. When I talk about miracles, too, I'm not talking about those things that defy all human logic and human laws. I'm talking about those incredible things, but yes, sometimes just blessings of God that happen in your life. Remember those past miracles in your life. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's easy for me to forget the incredible things that God has done in my life. It says in Psalm 126, verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for you. And we are told that we are to remember the wonders he has already done in your life. And if we stop rejoicing over those things that he has already done, how can we have any joy of hope for the future of what he wants to do? I saw a, uh, um, it, I, I was reading in Psalm 103 this past week. And Psalm 103 says, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And in that Psalm, David says, Don't forget all the benefits God has done and already done in your life. He talks about, don't forget about uh, the, how he has forgiven you of your sins. Don't forget about those times he has brought you healing. Don't forget about how he has lifted you out of the pit from time to time. Don't forget about how he has satisfied your life with good things. Forget not his benefits. Don't forget those wonderful, incredible things that he has done for you. And when I took the time to really pause and give myself some time to think, 
Let me just spend some time reflecting on what God has done in my life. I hadn't done it in a while. I knew about those things. But when I began to remember how he has provided for me in credible ways, how he has met with me at certain times, that Joe, wow, that's only God. Um, remember the past things he has done in your life. Most of all, don't forget the incredible miracle of eternal life that God has given to you. Don't forget the fact that just as Mary carried around the Messiah inside of her, I carry around the Messiah inside of me too in my heart. I'm a vessel of the Holy Spirit. God lives within me. God lives within believers. And what an incredible thing that is to be someone who carries around God in their life. I don't always show it the way I should. But when I remember the incredible things he has done for me, I am just so thankful that uh, uh, for what he has done, and he has some more things in store for me. Secondly, we need to recognize the present miracles. We need to recognize what he's doing to, in your life today. Matthew 21, 42 says, This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. God is doing things in our lives this day. He is in doing incredible things right now. But sometimes people are so busy and praying for miracles to happen that they fail to recognize them when they happen. Uh, I heard the uh, expression many years ago, and I've always stayed with me, when you look only for the spectacular, you may miss the supernatural. Another way of putting it is that you can't, sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees. Don't miss the obvious things that God is doing in your life. And you need to pray, I need to pray, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see what you're doing right now. <clears throat> There's a story in the Old Testament about the prophet Elisha. And in one of these stories, Elisha is in this house with, with a servant. And Elisha's servant went out of the house to look around the hills that were surrounding their house. And when he came out, he noticed that the enemy's army with chariots were circling that whole valley where he was staying. And he was really afraid. And he came back in and he told Elisha, Elisha, I just went outside and there's an army out there. There are chariots and warriors surrounding us. No matter where I look, they are up on the top of the hill. But Elisha wasn't phased, and Elisha just said a prayer, Lord, open his eyes so that he can see. And he sent his servant out a second, a second time. And when Elisha, went out, when his servant went out a second time, the army that he had seen before was still there. But this time, because God opened his eyes, he was able to see the armies of God, angels of God, circling that enemy. And Elisha said, you know what? Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Sometimes we just need God to open our eyes to what he is doing. It doesn't mean that the problems go away. But when you realize, hey, I'm with you. I am with you. It makes all the difference in the world. Don't let the evil of this world blind you to what God is doing. Nothing is impossible with God. Well, I'm stuck in a situation and there's just no way out. There's no road out of my situation. Here's the incredible thing about God. When we find ourselves in those situations where there is no road out, he makes a road. That's who God is. 
Nothing is impossible with him. And don't lose sight of what God is already doing in your life. Don't lose sight of the fact that you're carrying around God in your own life right now. And finally, to rejoice about the potential miracles. Joel 2.21 says, Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Well, who am I that he should do such incredible things in my life? Who was Mary that God should do such incredible things in her life? God loves you. And he has plans for your life. It may involve miracles. It may not. But miracles, the greatest miracle of all, has already happened if you believe in Jesus. And what God wants us to do is that when we find our place, ourselves in a time of need, rejoice and give thanks to him for what he's going to do. You may not understand it, just like Mary. I don't understand how you're going to get me out of this situation. But what God wants to hear from us is, I don't understand it, but I thank you that you hear my voice. When Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus, his friend who had been dead for four days, he came to that tomb where Lazarus was still dead, and Jesus turned his eyes to heaven. And before any miracle had happened, while Lazarus was still dead, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. That makes me think, wow, Jesus had confidence in his father that he was going to work things out. I'm learning to say to my father for myself, Father, I thank you that you hear me. I don't understand how you're going to get me out of this situation. I don't understand how you're going to work these things out. But I thank you that you hear me, because that's who his father is. When was the last time you told your father, Father, thank you that you hear me? Miracles still happen. I love Psalm 77, 14, where it says, You are the God who performs miracles. You're, you display your power among the peoples. Let me read that again. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. Let me read it one more time. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people who go to Grace Lutheran Church and are associated with Grace Lutheran Church. Not because we're special, not because he's not doing it anywhere else. Because God loves to display his power. He does it through miracles. If no other miracle happens in my life for as long as I live on this earth, I have already received the greatest miracle of all. But God has wonderful things in store for us. And I want us to... <clears throat> Don't lose sight of the fact that nothing is impossible with God. No matter how deep your pit may be that you find yourself in from time to time. And I'm not just talking, it may be an emotional pit, it may be a financial pit, it may be a physical pit. Whatever pit you might find yourself in, no matter how deep that pit might be, no impo how impossible it may seem, Nothing is impossible with God. I don't know how he's going to do it. It's not up to you to tell God how to get you out of your pit. But it is up to you to say, Lord, 
Thank you that you hear me. I don't understand how you're going to get me out of this, but you are still the God of miracles. And if it takes a miracle to get me out, or if it just takes a friend coming to me and helping me, you know how to help me in this situation. This week, as we approach Christmas, don't spend your week looking for your miracle. Spend your week looking for Jesus. There is no greater miracle than him. There is no greater miracle than knowing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And when we can see the miracle in his birth at Christmas, there is hope that is instilled in our lives. If you've sunk really deep into a pit that you just can't seem to get out of. Uh, Pastor Doug said last week that when you find yourselves in certain situations, you just need to reboot. You need to come before the Lord, and, and I would uh, even say, as when I think of situations in my own life, to say, Lord, I'm sorry for just thinking you can't help me. Forgive me for that. But Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I just need to reboot. And maybe this morning's a time to reboot, to begin to see the miracles of God that are already with us. In a minute, we'll come up and partake of the Lord's Supper. How in the world is the presence of God in that? If that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. God's miracles are all around us, and when we begin to look for Jesus, they just seem to become more obvious. I want to leave with you a Christmas miracle scripture. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. May Jesus become all of those things in your life this week. Father, we thank you. We don't always understand you, but we trust in you. Thank you that you hear our voice. Thank you that you still do miracles. Thank you that you, when we put our hope in you, you never dis we are never disappointed. Encourage us this week, Lord. Um, just as that first Christmas miracle made such an impact on this world, you haven't changed, and we pray you do that the same to and through each and every one of us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to confess with me a few miracles. Miracles that we read every week, but we very easily take for granted. Uh, but would you rise and confess with me the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Maybe see it.